up guys it is joe here from joe talks wrestling once again bringing you the yearly wwe wrestlemania predictions video now before i get into this video i just want to let you guys know that both nights the fourth and the fifth i will be watching wrestlemania live um without zach obviously i can't see zach until this lockdown is over so yeah no zach but just like we did last year, we've got a very special guest for this predictions video. Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't met him already, introducing my dog, Woody. So, yeah, Woody's going to be with us once again. He was last year for the WrestleMania predictions. So without further ado, this is going to be a long video. So let's get right into it. Okay, so a lot of these matches are very random, and uh, I don't know if all of them are going to be taking place, so I've put all these matches in the video anyway, just to play it safe. But anyway, I'm not going to dawdle on these uh, on these matches that don't really have any story, because there's not much point. Alistair Black versus Bobby Lashley. Alistair Black's going to win. Woody, what do you think? Next up, we have a match that's had a story going for absolutely ages, and I love it. Otis and Dolph Ziggler having their big blow-off match at WrestleMania on a Mandy Rose on a pole match. I'm joking, that is not the stipulation. However, obviously, we know the feud between Otis and Dolph all over Mandy Rose. Um, it goes back to Valentine's Day, goes back before Valentine's Day. But either way, I think Otis is going to win, and finally, Otis is going to get his peach. Woody, what do you think? Next up, we have the Kabuki Warriors, Asuka and Kairi Sane, defending the WWE Women's Tag Team Championships for the first time since last WrestleMania. I'm joking. Um, against Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. I think this match is taking place, but I don't know. I've got the Kabuki Warriors down to win. Woody, what do you think? Okay, so moving on to the next match, after uh, getting thrown off of a balcony on SmackDown with that amazing sound effect, we have Elias versus King Corbin. Um, I have got King Corbin winning this match. What about you, Woods? Okay, so next up we have this very thrown together um, Raw Tag Team Championship match. It was initially meant to be Andrade and Angel Garza taking on the Street Profits, but Andrade had to pull out due to an injury. So now it's Austin Theory, for some reason, from NXT uh, versus the Street Profits. So Austin Theory and Angel Garza taking on the Street Profits for the Raw Tag Team Championships. I've got the Street Profits retaining. I mean, for a match that's been thrown together this quick, half the WWE Universe don't even know who Austin Theory is unless they're NXT fans. So I've got the Street Profits retaining. On to Woody. Next up, we have the SmackDown Tag Team Championship match. And I don't know if this match is going to take place due to apparently The Miz being like uh, not very well backstage. But either way, it's on the list. So we've got Miz and Morrison. I was about to do their song then. Uh, yeah, Miz and Morrison. Um, Miz and Morrison versus The Usos versus The New Day in a Tag Team Championship ladder match. I have got personally Miz and Morrison to retain. What about you, Woody? Okay, interesting. I think that was the first prediction that me and Woody have had that's different from each other. Um, hopefully more to come. So next up, we have the SmackDown Women's Fatal 5-Way match between the champion Bailey, Sasha Banks, Tamina, Lacey Evans and Naomi. Uh, this was meant to be a six-pack challenge with Dana Brooke, but she's in self-isolation, so that's out of the picture. Anyway, I have got Sasha Banks winning the SmackDown Women's Championship. I don't know if she's going to pin Bailey. But I've got Banks leaving with the title. Woody, what about you? Next up, we have the WWE Intercontinental Championship match between Sami Zayn, the brand new Intercontinental Champion, in his first title defence against Daniel Bryan. Now, Daniel Bryan has previously won the Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania in a ladder match at WrestleMania 31. But do I think he's going to win this time? No. Sami Zayn has just won the Intercontinental Championship. He's got Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro as backup. Daniel Bryan's only got Drew Gulak, which I doubt will even go to the ring with him. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. But either way, I think it's way too early. And especially considering it's taken Sami this long to win a, a singles championship, a, well, scratch that, any championship in WWE, I don't think they're going to take it off of him in his first 
first defence. But I could be wrong. But I'm going with Sami Zayn to retain. Woody, what's your prediction? Next up, we have the man, the Monday Night Messiah, the absolute goat of the WWE roster, Seth freaking Rollins taking on Kevin Owens in a singles match. And normally, I never bet against my guy Seth, but um, obviously Kevin has been screwed and beaten up by um, the Monday Night Messiah and his disciples for months now. So I think Kevin Owens is going to win this match. Woody, what about you? Okay, so now we have one of the probably most interesting matches on the WrestleMania 36 card. The NXT Women's Championship match. The first time an NXT title has ever been defended on a WrestleMania card. And it is between Charlotte and the current champion, Rhea Ripley. Um, I personally, I really don't want to see Charlotte win the NXT Women's Championship. I don't know if that's just me. But, you know, you've got NXT division and then you've got the, like, the main roster division. You can't even call it main roster anymore. NXT is the third brand. But I don't think it's right. Like, Charlotte has literally done everything as is other than women's money in the bank. So she doesn't need to do it all. Because if she does it all, what left does she have to do? Why is she still around? You know what I mean? So this early on in her career, and I know I say early on, she's been in the WWE for at least, like, six years. But... It's just one of them things. I don't want to see Rhea Ripley lose to Charlotte. I really don't. Um, I've got a feeling though it might happen, but I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna stay positive and say that Rhea Ripley's gonna retain. What about you, Woody? Okay, so now we have a boneyard match between the Phenom Undertaker taking on the phenomenal. AJ Styles and Undertaker has been cutting these promos that are out of the dead man character recently and it's really making me think bold prediction we're gonna get the American badass taker back that's probably not gonna happen but hey I can dream can't I uh, I haven't seen American badass in my lifetime I wasn't a WWE fan when that uh, gimmick was around uh, in fact I was only like two um, so hey ho no 2002 when did he debut that was 2000 2003? I don't know. I might not have even been born when American Badass Taker was around. But hey-ho, I would love to see the American Badass come out and whoop AJ Styles. But either way, the prediction is the same. I have got Undertaker winning. What about you, Woods? Okay, so next up we've got a match that is rumoured to be very cinematic. Uh, obviously, with no attendance and WrestleMania being taped, they can do whatever they want in post-production. So, I don't know. Um, John Cena versus The Fiend Bray Wyatt in a Firefly Funhouse match. Now, I forgot to mention at the start of this video, this video is being recorded before the go-home Smackdown, but after the go-home Raw. So, John Cena is yet to accept this match, but obviously he's going to. Um, so John Cena versus The Fiend. It also could be John Cena versus Normal Bray. I've seen rumours that they can have The Fiend and Normal Bray both in the match. And there is one way to do this where John Cena wins and you still protect Bray. But I'm hoping WWE don't do it. I should say, initially, my prediction is for Bray Wyatt to win. However, if you're going to have John Cena win, at least make him pin um, Funhouse Bray Wyatt and not The Fiend. Uh, but... I don't think Cena's winning. Cena beat Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania 30. It's time for Bray to get his revenge. Bray Wyatt to win. What about you, Woody? Next up, we have a match that is pretty much going to define whether Becky Lynch stays the Raw Women's Champion for an entire year or not. Um, and if they're going to do it, they should do it on the second night because I think that means that's her 365th day. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, WrestleMania last year was on April 5th um, and it's April 4th and 5th this year. So do it on night two and then I'm predicting Shayna Baszler to win. Apparently Vince is not that high on her, but Shayna Baszler, she's mental. If you see some of her like NXT stuff, she's really good when given the chance. She's just not very good at talking. Like Her promos really aren't good. Um, give her a mouthpiece. Um, that would be cool, but it depends who. I don't know. Either way, I think that Shayna Baszler is going to take the championship from Becky. But then what happens to Becky? Because I don't know what the man gimmick 
happens next. Maybe she takes a leave of absence. I've heard ages ago that her and Seth are meant to take a leave of absence anyway after WrestleMania, but WWE entirely could be taking a leave of absence after WrestleMania. So it's all up in the air at the moment, but I'm going with Shayna to take the title. What's your prediction, Woody? Next up, we have the match that I personally am most looking forward to at WrestleMania, the return of the rated R superstar, Edge, in his first one-on-one -on -one match since WrestleMania 27, which is absolutely insane. Nine years Edge has been out. WrestleMania 27 was my first WrestleMania that I actually watched. I watched it, oh yeah, I didn't watch it live. I watched it the day afterwards on Sky Sports box office. Um, little nine-year-old me. And yeah, that is absolutely mental. But Edge versus Randy Orton, last man standing. If you're gonna bet against him, in my mind, you're an idiot. Um, Edge is winning. There's no way in hell Randy Orton's gonna win. So the rated R superstar to win his return match. Woody, what's your prediction? Well, after having said that if you're an idiot, if you think Randy Orton, Never mind, Woods, I guess you know what you are. Um, but hey-ho, next up we have the match that is really confusing everyone at the moment because it was meant to be Goldberg versus Roman Reigns for the WWE Blue Universal Championship. But Reigns has pulled out to WrestleMania. Absolutely understandable for family reasons, for health reasons. It doesn't matter his reasoning. We can all understand that. Um, so we're left with unanswered questions. Who's going to be facing Goldberg? Now, I've seen the main person, the main candidate to face Goldberg is Braun Strowman. But here's why I don't want that to happen. The Fiend decimated Braun Strowman a couple months ago. I say a couple months ago. It's more like, like eight, no, like six months ago. But The Fiend absolutely battered Strowman, put him to sleep easily. And... In my mind, Goldberg, there's no way in hell he's walking out of Mania with the uh, Universal Championship. It's just not going to happen. I don't think he signed on to do anything more than WrestleMania. So, Goldberg and Fiend, Goldberg beat him relatively quickly. I wouldn't say he squashed him, but he kind of did. Um, so having Braun Strowman, who the Fiend decimated, come out and beat Goldberg doesn't make any long-term story sense. So I don't know who it's going to be. I'm making this prediction so I'm right either way. Goldberg is losing. That's my prediction. It doesn't matter who it's against. Goldberg's losing. That's my prediction. But if I could have it my way and I fantasy booked it, I would personally have Triple H come out and beat Goldberg for the Blue Universal Championship because then Triple H is still going to be around every single week. He can drop it to anyone when the time is right, whenever they need, because he's always going to be there. But he's also credible enough to beat Goldberg because there's no one on the current roster that I think deserves. Not necessarily deserves. There's no one on the current roster that I think can beat Goldberg due to The Fiend beating all of them. So have Triple H come out and beat him. It's a win-win. Triple H gets another championship added to his repertoire. What more could you want? But I don't know. I hope that happens. The likelihood of it happening is very, very slim. But either way, Goldberg to lose. Woody, what do you think? Interesting prediction there by Woody, but we're moving on to the main event, the match that, probably the second match I'm most looking forward to, Drew McIntyre taking on Brock Lesnar for the one, the only, the WWE Championship. And I'm going to tell you straight up, Brock Lesnar is retaining the WWE title. Um, and if I'm wrong, I will eat my words, but I don't think I am wrong. Um, and the reasoning behind that is there's multiple reasons, realistically. Uh, yeah, there is multiple reasons. So initially, my main reason for it was Brock got beat clean. Not, not clean, there was low blows. But he got beat one, two, three last year by Seth Rollins. Before that, at SummerSlam 2018, he got beat one, two, three by Roman Reigns. Brock Lesnar, I take, doesn't like losing very much. Um... And because of that, I do not see any possible way that Drew McIntyre is going to squash Brock and be, become the WWE Championship at WrestleMania. Become the WWE Championship. He's not going to become the belt. He's going to become champion. 
So because of that, I've put Brock winning. The also other aspect to it, maybe my opinion would have changed if Mania was in front of a crowd, but the, the stakes behind it, I don't think a lot of you realise how big this match actually is for British wrestling. Drew McIntyre, although he's Scottish, Scotland is part of England. It's still part of the United... Well, it's not part of England. It's still part of the United Kingdom. Um, meaning that if Drew wins, he technically becomes the first ever British WWE champion, which means for people like me, that gives us hope um, for our future. That gives us hope for the future of British wrestling. And that would be absolutely awesome. So I don't think they're going to waste that moment in front of no crowd. I think that moment has to be captured in front of a massive audience, a SummerSlam, a WrestleMania, um, literally one of the two. I don't even think out of the big four, it has to be one of them too, which hopefully that means that, well, I fantasy booked this already. I literally fantasy booked that Drew was going to lose to Brock at Mania and then win at SummerSlam. And I think that's going to happen. I think, obviously, once again, I'll eat my words if I'm wrong, but I have got down Brock Lesnar retaining. Maybe not clean. Maybe he has to hit a low blow. Maybe he has to cheat to win. That would be cool because that keeps Drew's credibility up. But I've got Brock winning, and then I've got Drew winning the championship eventually at a later date. But yeah, Woody, final prediction. Who do you think is going to win? And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That was mine and my dog Woody's WWE WrestleMania 36 predictions. The event that is too big for one night. Uh, taking place in no crowd at the WWE Performance Center this Saturday and this Sunday, April 4th and April 5th, respectively. I'm going to be watching live once again. Uh, these predictions, once again, were filmed before the Go Home Smackdown. So any added matches, I will most likely add in the comments or the description. Um, but... I don't know. What do you guys think this show's going to be? I've been trying to say to people that we need to look on the bright side of everything in this uh, COVID-19 world. And because of that, we just need to take WrestleMania for what it is. Firstly, this is an absolute spectacle. Not necessarily the show itself, but the fact that we will be witnessing the hopefully, hopefully, one and only WrestleMania to take place in front of zero crowd is history. We are literally watching history and which is mental because I could be telling my grandkids in 60 years time, yeah, I watched WrestleMania live. Well, it wasn't live, it was taped, but I watched it in front of no crowd. The only WrestleMania to ever have no crowd. And that is something in my mind, I think that is awesome. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I just want to say thank you to Mr. McMahon and all the WWE team, everyone that works at WWE, all the superstars, everyone, because they are still making this show happen despite the epidemic that is going on into the world. And no matter the results of WrestleMania, no matter what happens, we as WWE fans just need to remember to be grateful and be thankful that this match is still going ahead. We can actually, this match, this whole show, I should say, and this is absolutely fantastic. I'm very grateful that WWE are doing this. It's a two-night distraction so we can, our heads can escape the current world of what is going on in real life. And for that, once again, I want to say thank you. And yeah, whatever happens at WrestleMania, um, I'm not going to be mad. There's nothing at WrestleMania this year, I don't think, that can make me really butt hurt like there was like last year and the year before, for example. Um, unless, you know, I don't know, what even is there? Unless Randy Orton beats Edge, that will get me fuming. But other than that, everything's perfect. So once again, um, I want to say thank you to Woody for being part of my predictions video. Um, hopefully you guys will see him in the WrestleMania 37 predictions video next year if all goes well. And yeah, I've been Joe from Joe Thoughts Wrestling. You guys have been awesome. Stay tuned for more wrestling content. Please be sure to give this video a like, comment and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you all at WrestleMania. There should be some pretty good reactions. So I will see you then. Goodbye.